Nepal, an exotic land of mysticism. From the snowy Himalayas to the flat lowlands. It is also the birthplace of the Lord Buddha. At the heart of the Kathmandu Valley, near the legendary Budanat Stupa, is the Kaning Shudrab Ling Monastery. It is home to more than 180 monks and several incarnate lamas. Completed in 1976, the monastery was founded by the late Tuku Ujin Rinpoche, a renowned meditation master of the Kaju and Nyingma schools of Tibetan Buddhism. The family lineage is of the rare Barum Kaju and the Nyingma lineage of the great treasure revealer Chokyu Lingpa. His four sons and two grandsons are also incarnations of very important lamas. The eldest son, Chokyi Nima Rinpoche, is the abbot of the cunning Shudrab Ling Monastery. The second son, Chokling Rinpoche, is the Vajra Master, presiding over religious ceremonies in the cunning Shudrab Ling Monastery. Most importantly, he is the fourth incarnation of Chokyu Lingpa. The two younger sons, Sokni Rinpoche and Mingja Rinpoche, head the Negden Osling Monastery, located near Soyambu in Nepal. Chokling Rinpoche's oldest son, Pachok Rinpoche, is an important Taklung Kaju Tuku incarnate. The other son, Kianzi Rinpoche, was recognized as the incarnation of Dilgo Kianzi Rinpoche. At the Kaning Shadra Baling Monastery, the monks' daily lives revolve around the study and the practice of the Buddha doctrine. Some of the monks are as young as six years old. When I was a small kid, uh, that time I was going to school. And uh, when I was uh, 11 years old, uh, I became monk. My family was quite very strongly in religious person, so that's why. So they gave me permission to be a monk. And actually they told me not to be a monk when I was small because too small to take care of myself. So they want me to get a first point and then later can be a monk. They told me like this, but still then I just pursue it. I mean, I just want to be a monk immediately. That is a big responsibility. So young and so young, some, some is like eight, nine. But uh, I asked to that boy, you really, this is your own interest or family asked to do this? I asked few, often, different, different times. They says, no, this is my wish. Why? I like become a monk. I see the monks, I like. I see the puja, I like. This is my interest. Then I say, better you come later when you grow a little up. Huh? It's too young to come. Some not say much, some says no, I like to come right now. So some, sometimes this kind of cases, parents also want us to accept, because child want very much. They're not just pushing away, you understand? Child want very much. Child not going to school? Says, I will not go to school. Only go to monastery. If you send me monastery, I go and study. If you want to school, I know. So parents also not easy, but it's a big, big responsibility. And we have few senior monks, they are very kind. They really take care a lot, otherwise it's true, really difficult. Six days a week, the monks attend reading, writing and grammar classes. They also study the Tibetan, Sanskrit and Nepali languages, chanting, 
and other general academic subjects. Older monks engage in Shedra studies. The subjects include history, philosophy, and analysis and memorization of classical Buddhist scriptures. Another scholastic approach to studying Buddhism is through the Tibetan art of debate. It is an integral part of logic training to sharpen the monk's reasoning skills. The goal is to crush the opponent's chosen theme through logic and rationalism. Through these debates, the Buddhist scriptures are constantly re-examined. They help to either reinforce relevant Buddhist theories or eliminate stale ones. Monks are also involved in the pujas or Buddhist rituals. Chanting accompanied by musical instruments is vital in these ceremonies. Abbot's permission, monks who desire to devote themselves to full-time spiritual practice may set aside their academic studies and withdraw to the monastery's retreat centers. I mean, when you practice it, you, you have a kind of very peaceful and you're very happy, you don't have any problem, you just practice, then you just pray. And, you, and the main thing, when you practice, you're doing all this for whole sentient beings. Actually, Dharma study is uh, not like other study. I mean, when lay people they're studying in school, because when lay people they're studying and after finish their study, uh, most of them I think become a doctor or become a very famous scientist or whatever pilot. But Dharma study is not for this only for this life. So that's why um, accumulation do the accumulations and also I mean uh, I have to meditate for the enlightenment. Choki Nima Rinpoche also has to take care of the Azura Cave Temple in Paping. It is a meditation center for the monks and the nuns, where they practice their traditional three-year retreats. Also under his care is the Nagi Gompa Nunnery, home to 108 nuns. The monastery and the nunnery are constantly undergoing expansion and renovation to provide simple living quarters, dining halls, classrooms, medical clinics and retreat facilities. Beginning time, many Nepalese says, why are you building so big monastery? There is no monk. 
and uh, and they also asking, oh, how much money you have? You might have a lot of money, otherwise you will not build like that. So we have a little money, we have no monk, but we think it's good project and helpful for future, since we can't go back to Tibet immediately. So we like to do something meaningful, helpful for all sentient beings. So the reasons we built this monastery through very hardship, no money, little money, and also we don't know much about the Nepali systems. You understand? So we need to face a lot of problems. Even my late father Ujjaramas himself, he walked. Bottom line is we all work very hard. Now this is the result. Now we have 180 months. Then they are educated quite well. Now we have over 100 months. It's good news. And bad news is not enough room. You understand? But that's good news, I thought, because more and more people are interested. So one hand is beautiful, another hand is project never finished. Building, building. Good morning. For many years, Chokhi Nima Rinpoche has made himself easily accessible to the public. How's your everything? Everything's very good. School, school very good. Just finished. Conversant in English, Tibetan, Nepali, and Hindi, he dedicates two hours daily to greeting locals, travelers, and Buddhist students. And when I first met Rinpoche, he's a very nice person, he's very compassionate, very kind, and he, he's got a lot of Westerner uh, students around him and he always joke with them. Maybe that's his, his way of teaching, you know, his approach to teach the Westerners in a different manner. And I told myself, you no, know, this Rinpoche is always joking, he's not serious, you no, know, maybe he's not my guru. But actually when Rinpoche saw me, he was very nice to me and he told me, you, know, you must read this book, you must read Four Foundation book, you must, you know, he gave me a long list of books to read. And I told myself, this Lama is very funny, you know. I don't know him and he's telling me to do so many things. But anyway, I just did it, I still got hold of the books and I tried to read. And I didn't understand a single thing because during that time I know nothing about Dharma. I know nothing about Vajrayana. But Rinpoche was very kind and he kept telling me, if you have any questions, you must come back and ask me. Chokhi Nima Rinpoche has also been giving Saturday Dharma talks at his monastery in the Kathmandu Valley. And each year in the fall, Chokhi Nima Rinpoche teaches a 10-day seminar at the Kaning Shadrab Ling Monastery. Human merit and culture also one kind of discipline. People need to respect in different countries, different, you know, traditions, different, different discipline, different culture. You know? He's, uh, he's very open, he's very warm-hearted, he's very funny. He uses humor to, to teach us. Um, he, has, he has that quality that they say the great teachers have, which is that it seems to everybody in the audience that something that he said is just for them. I was grabbed. I was just like this and listening, and I didn't want to miss a word. I wanted to hear everything. There were people, you know, who this was their first introduction to Dharma. There were people who had been practicing for 20 and 30 years, and he managed to reach everybody. Where we may find ourselves entirely free from the uh, three types of suffering. <laughs> Dharma and retreat centers were also established in the United States, Denmark, and Malaysia. These centers host yearly seminars with Chokhi Nima Rinpoche and often invite various other lamas to teach. The Dharma centers also allow students a place for retreat. I hope this is one of my one biggest hope I want to have 
at least 500 monks, hope over 1,000, uh, and study and practice. And whoever need in this world, I like to send them all over the world. These days, you know, when I went to Europe and America, and Southeast Asia, and even in Russia, many, our, many people, what they say, oh, we like to learn proper teaching. Can you come often? Or can you send someone, a monk, good monk? So, and then I thought more and more, I think very important to educate it. Ordain to monks and nuns and send all over the world to help. For now, those who wish to deepen their insight and understanding of the Buddha's teachings can attend the structured Shudra program by the cunning Shudra Ling Monastery. Established in 1997, this program evolved out of Chokhi Nima Rinpoche's wish to give more people the opportunity to learn the Buddha's teaching in an authentic manner. Enlightenment is not just something for the Tibetans to achieve, but for all sentient beings. For people who are sincerely interested in learning the Buddhist teachings, there should be a place where they can learn in a thorough manner. What they learn will be useful in the future. They could teach and so forth, so that becomes a positive development. That's why Choki, Nima, Rinpoche and I thought that it is necessary to have an international centre for Buddhist studies. I hope to learn the text, the way uh, the Tibetans learn it, the way the monks learn it. It's more interesting when you want to study a subject, to study it from the inside. So if you are studying it in a monastery, you have the chance to learn it the way the teachings was supposed to be learned. Many lay Tibetans like myself, we know the mantras, we know some prayers, and we recite them, and we observe the rituals. But I wasn't happy just with that. I wanted to know the meaning of what I was reciting, and I wanted to know more about the philosophy and the reasoning behind the philosophy. <laughs> The Shedra Studies is an eight-year program. Each academic year lasts four months from November to March. The Shedra will cover essential Buddhist philosophies, the Tibetan language and meditation. Tibetan language classes will develop the students' ability to directly understand both the oral and the written Buddhist teachings and to learn translation skills. Plus, we're trying to learn a foreign language, and Tibetan is a difficult language to learn, and we're learning to write and read and speak. And the written language and the spoken languages are different, so it's like learning two new languages. So if you put all that together, it's definitely a challenge. I mean, nobody who's here is on vacation. And the tradition uh, in Tibet was to memorize a lot. And, and Westerners, we are, are not nearly so good at that. <laughs> we take a lot of notes and we study, but we don't memorize it word for word. Um, the way that it may have been done in the past, and so we we have a whole different way of taking it in. But it's it's definitely uh, it's challenging. There was one woman here who was she was a first year student when I was a first year student two years ago, and then she went to law school in America, and she said the shedder was harder than law school. <laughs> it was sort of I don't know the English. They put way. big effort to, give a bad image to, the to come members. here, time, money, energy. So even, the, even it's not easy, you know, to study many hours. But I thought it was very important to teach them well, discuss with them well. Undaunted by the intensive Shadra program, more Buddhist students are taking up the course. From a modest number of 15 students when it started, there are now an overwhelming 75 Shadra students. It shows how much they interest. And also the number is increasing quite faster. So this is this is a very wonderful thing. 
But not only we worry, you know, the rooms are not big enough. <laughs> Very back. It's wonderful that the number of students have increased. But what is more important is that these students really study and learn well. On the other hand, though there are many Asian disciples from Hong Kong, Malaysia and Singapore, there are few Asian students in the Shedra classes. In the West, it is quite popular to study the different cultures and traditions of the world and the arts. That may be one of the reasons why so many people from the West set aside long periods of time just to come here to learn. Of course, Asians do come, but so far, they are here for shorter periods. I am quite sure that more will come. I think part of the problem is that many are not aware. And I've been telling my friends that there is this shelter for lay people. You see, finding a shelter for lay people is next to impossible. So, and I know some of them are interested, but then, as I say, circumstances don't permit it. Many are earning a living or have small children or live too far away, stuff like that. You know, the, the, the right conditions don't exist for them. I would like to, but uh, I, 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 have a, I have my own family commitment. Like my mother, you know, she's 85 years old, which I cannot leave behind to look after. Because I did ask Rinpoche once, you know, can I come here and practice? He said, no, it's not time for you yet. So maybe I just have to wait for his instructions. I think the Asians, their connection has not ripened yet. When the time is right, they will come. <clears throat> In Asian, you know, many people are born in Buddhism. They respect Buddhism, they like Buddhism. But many are, especially the gener young generation time, they're not, they're not that, they're not put that much interest to study or practice. They respect, they love, but that's not enough. After completing the Shedra program, interested students may remain at the institute to conduct advanced studies, work on translation projects, or assist in teaching and translating. Some of the Shedra students are already acting as translators. With their help, Buddhist teachings will benefit more people in the future. The teaching of Buddha Dharma is made, you know, that knowledge makes them a better person. More gentle, more wise, more sharp, more patient. So, uh, through this, they can do many helpful things. Definitely not harmful thing. I think I've learned to look at my motivation in uh, in life, how I uh, react to people. I I learned to look at my behavior. I think that's the main part, and to and to be and to be positive toward 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 life and everything in life. <laughs> I like to continue to have this international shelter in Nepal, also slowly in other countries. And uh, whoever wish to study Papa Buddha Dharma, and they can join here or other places. Because when I was in Europe and America, often I hearing where to study Papa Buddha Dharma. Where? I think all of you know. The Lord Buddha is born in this earth, where? In Lumini. Situated southwest of Kathmandu, near the Indian border, is Lumbini, the birthplace of Lord Buddha. Every 
Every year, pilgrims from all over the world visit the sacred place. That place is a very blessed place. If he if he not born, his teaching is not here. So then we feel very lucky. Uh, his teaching is still very clearly. And we're lucky we know where he born. So we like to have, to have connection. And also in, in Buddhism, we believe these holy places are very powerful. Whoever stay there, whoever practice or study, this is a big bliss, big powerful. We can, you know, especially we practice this energy of blessings are much more better than just normal bliss. And also many, many people come to respect and pray. Choki Nima Rinpoche is working on building a monastery in Lumbini. The Pel Tupton Shudrab Ling Monastery will be built in the traditional Tibetan Buddhist style with a large main temple to accommodate 1,000 people. We need to accumulate a proper place, a proper way to do that. So in Lumbini we have built a big monastery. So we would like to have inside and Tirpitakas, Tibetan Tirpitaka, Sanskriti, Pali, and uh, big three Buddha statue, past, future, now Buddha, and thousand Buddhas, and uh, many Bodhisattvas, eight Bodhisattvas, uh, 16 Arahants, and many other statues. So we like to have this all inside, and many monks, many practitioners. We want help from all over the world. Come, study, and practice, and meditate. So many, many reasons. We like to have a, a beautiful monastery to build there. This is not only our wish, this is later of Ujjinobhichi's wish. Also many other teachers says this is very, very important. monastery will be an entirely self-contained Buddhist community with a meditation temple, a lecture hall, study facilities, and a Buddhist library comprising thousands of religious texts in a dozen languages. Above all, the main temple will provide a cool, quiet place for the pilgrims to rest in meditation and absorb the powerful blessings of Lord Buddha's legacy. You know, help is many ways. I like to all of you to know what this project, how important this project. Whoever like to help, whatever way, if they like to help their skill, their donation, even if any of you just concern, concern you call how going, what happened. Just pray, think us, you know, care, caring this project. That is a big thing for us. Choki Nima Rinpoche's successor is Pachok Rinpoche, the elder son of Chokling Rinpoche. He is also recognized to be the eighth incarnation of Pachok Rinpoche of Taglum Kaju. Mm. My grandfather, Tugu Ujin Rinpoche, founded this monastery. I hope that I may be able to fulfill all his wishes. I wish to be active in education and to help consolidate the different monasteries and the Dharma centers which are related to this place, to further develop them in a stable, beneficial way. The bottom line is good heart is extremely important. If we keep good heart, helpful thoughts, 
not only helpful thoughts, we do good things to other. We really, actually, we are practicing. There is no doubt many great milestones have been achieved by the cunning Shudrab Ling Monastery to turn the wheel of the Dharma, to give each and every one an opportunity to learn Buddhism. Oh, no. 